I'm going to share my screen with you all. Let's bring that down. All right, can everybody see that screen? I'm gonna start from the beginning. All right, if anybody has any questions um, during this um, presentation, please do not hesitate to just unmute. Um, let me know, you can also do um, the chat box, that should be able to pop up for me. Um, but I also know that this is your um, common hour, so we will try to get this done um, in an efficient amount of time for you all. Um, so you can enjoy that. Um, introduce myself. Um, my name is Joshua Cobble. I am the Assistant Director of Student Engagement for Leadership Programming um, in the Office of Student Engagement. Um, our office oversees leadership programming, clubs and organizations, um, fraternity and sorority life, SGA, um, and campus uh, programming board. So a lot of the ways to get involved on campus um, comes through our office. So if you ever have any questions on how to be involved um, or engaged, um, you can absolutely um, reach out to myself or any other person within our office. I just choked on my own words. All right, so we will get started. Um, today's topic um, is all about being a leader on Queens campus, um, what that looks like, um, how to be involved on campus, um, and what you can do to kind of build those leadership skills um, while you're at Queens. So. Um, the very first thing that I like to talk about um, when talking about leadership on campus is um, a theory. And theories are meant to, you know, be talked about, learned, um, researched, but I think it's all putting it into practice is really um, the important part. Um, but so this is just like a foundational opportunity for you to kind of get a sense of how um, we view leadership on our campus. Um, and one of the theories that we do utilize is the social change model. Um, this kind of takes three different values, um, individual values, group values, and society values, um, and brings them together to create um, that positive social change within the community. And I wanted to dive the, uh, into those um, a little bit. Um, just so that you are aware of what each of those means. So the first um, building block that we have is individual values. So this is all about um, who you are as an individual, what your beliefs um, say about your leadership style, um, and how your views kind of impact your leadership. So um, when you think about your personal leadership style, we want to think about consciousness of self. Um, these are your personal awareness, um, awarenesses of your beliefs, your values, and your emotions um, that make you take action. So why are you in this leadership role? What values do you have? What are your personal beliefs that kind of led you to be in this leadership position? Um, so these are kind of things that you want to think about um, when you are looking to be in a leadership role, um, the kind of why behind that. And then we also want um, congruence. Um, we want to um, think and we want to behave um, with consistency. Um, and that kind of goes along, if you are a true leader um, behind your beliefs, and your values, and your goals, um, you are going to behave with consistency. Um, and then of course we have commitment. Um, this is the motivational energy um, that drives your passion to be a leader. Um, if you are in a leadership role and you are not committed to that organization or that position, um, you aren't necessarily going to have the best results of being in that leadership position. Um, so just understanding um, that being a leader is a huge commitment um, and what that means before you take that leadership role. Um, next, we have group values. Um, these are all about working with others to um, create that change that you want to see. So first, we have collaboration. Um, these are working with others in a common effort, um, allowing you to not only empower yourself, but empower others um, that you're working with. 
Um, being in a leadership role is not a one person job. Um, it is all about working with others to create um, that common goal and to create that highly effective team to work together. Um, and then all of us working together are gonna work for that common purpose. Um, once you have a group of individuals that have that same common interests um, and share those values, um, you're gonna have a real powerhouse of a team to kind of build um, upon that. So when you're looking at joining a club or organization and you wanna be in that leadership role, look for organizations that do have that shared value. You know, are you interested in art? So you're gonna join um, the art club. Are you in interested? Um, in the equestrian club, you know, you all have that common purpose um, and that common um, value set. And then, of course, when we are in groups with other people, um, we are, we are going to have um, different beliefs sometimes. So understanding that working together, you are going to have um, controversy with civility. So being able to um, air grievances or air your personal beliefs, but knowing that you're all there as a team working together um, and that you can discuss these um, with honesty and civility um, so that you don't create um, a divide within the team, it actually builds your team up um, together. And then we have societal values. Um, and this is citizenship. Um, this is when you and your group um, become responsible um, for not only the community, um, but the people um, within that community. And then um, through that leadership experience. So, you know, being in a club or organization, you are responsibly connected to the Queens community. Um, there are things that you have to do to support Queens, um, to show that you are a member of the organization. And so being in that community and um, that um, experience kind of brings in that third model um, of societal values. And all of these, they call these the seven C's. Um, and they say the last C is change. Um, the reason that we are in leadership roles, um, especially on campus, is to create that change. Um, and you know, they say um, social change. Um, I always like to say positive social change because as leaders, we wanna make sure that we are creating um, opportunities to create positive change within our community so that moving forward, um, we have building blocks to build upon one another. So that was a very quick, brief overview um, of social change model of leadership. Um, and I want you to think about those um, eight C's while we dive into um, kind of what it looks like to be a leader on Queens campus. So I also wanted to um, kind of see, we can try to find um, the chat box to see, um, what your personal definition of leadership is. So if anybody wants to chat and kind of write down what their definition of leadership looks like. Being one to speak up when no one else will, teaching while still learning. One who guides others. Effectively rallying people. Paving the way, guiding others, active listener. Sets a standard to accomplish uh, better for others acts in the interest of other people. Perfect, so it looks like a lot of you um, have touched point um, about how it's not only being a leader of yourself, but leading other people and not only necessarily um, leading those people as um, we'll talk about in a minute, but kind of working with them to kind of guide them and be a model for them guides, listens, and takes accountability. Awesome. So going into that, um, 
I know we talk about um, leadership, but then there's also um, another role that we call um, manager. And so what is your idea of the difference between being a manager and being a leader of a group? One facilitates, one starts the change. Any other ideas? Being a manager is telling people what to do and how to do it. Leading is getting it done with them. Perfect. Manager oversees the process while the leader gathers the ideas. Metaphorical or symbolic role, role of a manager is more literal to facilitate and directly assist. Managers often work in tandem with the leader. Awesome. Yeah, these are all really great. Um, and absolutely, uh, you are right. And so I always like to bring this up because when we are looking for leadership roles on um, campus at Queens, we wanna make sure that we are truly, um, if you are looking for a leadership role, you're um, looking at getting into a leadership position and not necessarily um, a position of managership. Um, so kind of looking at what your values are, what your goals are being in this leadership position, and then looking at the actual position itself. And is it a role that they are just looking for someone to come in and kind of lead the group in a sense of, um, you know, telling people to do X, Y, and Z, um, kind of running organizational meetings, or is it someone that they're looking for to kind of be that change in the group that they kind of um, lead and guide others that are within that group? So, um, we're also gonna talk about um, this acronym CARES, um, and we're gonna talk about um, how leaders on Queens campus um, contribute uniqueness, act effectively, are resilient, embrace change, and stays grounded. Um, so these are all ways that as leaders on Queens campus, um, you can kind of um, create that change uh, while understanding that this leadership role is something that is a learning experience for everyone, um, even the most experienced um, people that are in leadership roles are constantly learning um, and understanding um, what this means to them. So the first one is contributes uniqueness. Um, so as a leader, when you are looking for those leadership roles, you want to understand um, that you as an individual do does have um, do have that original perspective. Um, I like to say we are all individuals and we all bring something unique to the table. So understanding your uniqueness and that your uh, your own original perspective is going to set you apart from other people in the group. Um, understanding that you have these transferable skills. Um, so you can be a leader in multiple organizations and what you bring to the table and then what you bring outside of that leadership role um, is super important. So understanding those transferable skills that you have, you know, communication can be one of them. You could be a leader of an athletic organization um, and you could still bring some of those skill sets into an academic organization. Um, so understanding what you're bringing to the table and how you can kind of correlate those to different groups that you're um, leading. And then understanding um, your own personal way of communication. Um, we live in a world where people um, communicate differently in types of how they receive information, how they give information. So understanding the best way um, that you give and receive that information, um, and then looking at your organization and how best they see um, that communication as well. And then um, add your own elements to theory. So we talked about the social change model theory. Um, but like I said before, you are an individual and you bring so much more to the just what is written on paper. 
um, or is put into books. So taking these theories and then building upon them so that you are not only um, saying, yeah, I have these skill sets, but I can also do X, Y, and Z, and this is what kind of makes me special in this group. Next, we have acts effectively. Um, so I always say being in a leadership role is not always um, for people who want quick and easy. Um, being in a leadership role is a demanding um, position because not only are, do you have a lot of um, building blocks on your back, but you do have an organization that you are trying to lead. Um, and so understanding that if you are truly interested in being a leader on campus, what those time commitments are and what that looks like um, for your own stability. Um, are you able to kind of take on your emotions and the emotions of the group that you are leading? Um, and do you have that capacity to kind of build onto that? Um, understanding your priorities and your goals. Um, if you're in a leadership position and you do not know what the goals of the organization are, what the priorities um, of yourself are, you probably aren't going to be able to lead very far. So I always say it's great once a semester to kind of sit down with yourself, your organization, and think about what are your goals as a group? What would you all like to see happen by the next semester? Um, because once you have these priorities and these goals in place, then you're able to have building blocks that you can say, oh, we reached X, we reached Y, um, and this is how we did it. Um, to kind of build upon yourself, um, build upon the organization, and really maximize um, your stretch on the campus. Um, and then the support and the resources, uh, resources on campus are extraordinary. You have an amazing set of um, professional faculty and staff on campus that want nothing more than you to succeed. So to act effectively as a leader, you have to understand that you can use these resources um, to your advantage. Reach out to these faculty members, to these staff members, talk about your experiences, talk about what you're going through, how can they help you, um, and then what other opportunities are provided to you on campus. Um, we have, organi organizations are also um, a really great resource. We have um, inter-club council meetings um, where organizational leaders come together and kind of talk about, you know, what they're going through and their experiences. And so that's an opportunity for um, all of these organizational presidents and leaders to come together to kind of be a resource and a support system for one another um, to help each other grow and thrive. Um, yes, I think you can take that for every organization that you are leading. There's always going to be somebody to support um, you and to be a resource. You are never acting alone as a leader. All right, resiliency. Um, a way of life is failure, and um, leaders always take the idea of failure and don't use it in the definition of, well, I'm stuck, I'm not gonna be able to grow from this experience. They take that failure, they look to see what happened, and they see how they can grow from that experience. Um, I also say it's okay to grieve your loss. Um, you are, leading an organization and you wanted to do something really badly and it completely falls through or it didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to. Um, it's okay to sit back and say, well, that sucks. Um, but as soon as you get into the habit of, you know, only thinking about the negatives of the outcome and not necessarily, you know, how can you grow from this experience? Um, that's when you start losing that resiliency and that leadership edge. Um, leaders are there to kind of support the organization and to move the group forward at all times. Um, so understanding how to be an innovative leader, what that looks like for yourself and for the group, um, and then how to take that strategic risk. Um, you know, I think being a leader is all about risk because nothing in life is really certain. 
Um, so understanding that for you to uh, create that um, environment within your organization for them to want to move forward and to take those risks, you have to be very strategic about it. You have to look at the pros and the cons and understand that this um, outcome might not be what we want it to be, but in the long run, in the long run, we are moving forward um, and we are being um, an organization built for our community. Um, also, listen and collaborate with other people. Um, resiliency is all about having each other's backs. So understanding that you are not alone in this, um, even if you are a leader of an organization, there are others within that organization who have your back and are going to help you um, stay resilient and keep you positive throughout that. And then of course, self-confidence. Um, being in a leadership role, you do have to have confidence in yourself to know what you are capable of. Um, and this goes back to understanding your values and your personal goals and who you are as an individual. Because once you know who you are and what your purpose is as a leader, then you're gonna have that self-confidence to continue to move forward even um, in the face of adversity. So then we are going to embrace change. Um, change is all around us. Even this semester, we've gone you know, completely virtual. Um, and for me, this is, I did this um, workshop on Tuesday, but this is the first time that I'm doing this workshop in a, a virtual setting. So embracing that change, normally this would be very hands-on, doing a lot of activities with one another, um, but trying to figure out how we can create um, an impactful workshop for you all um, while still getting that information across virtually. Um, so, you know, I always say um, big changes that we see constantly um, that we know are going to happen um, is technology, um, economic change, and social change. Um, technology, we think about when I was in high school, which was not very long ago, um, iPhones were not a thing. Um, the closest thing we had to it was a Blackberry. And sometimes I think about me going on the interwebs on my BlackBerry and it is nothing compared to what we um, do now on our iPhones. Um, so me, you know, going through my college experience um, with that technological change and really utilizing Twitter and Facebook, um, I was gonna say MySpace, but that kind of died out too. Um, but understanding these changes um, that technology is bringing us and how you as a leader can utilize them. Are your meetings now virtual? Are you able to do um, group chats? Are you able to um, do polls and surveys, not only within the organization, but now within the community, um, within the world? Um, so utilizing that technological change um, for your personal leadership style. And then also um, economic and social change. We see that happening right now. So understanding what that looks like um, your personal goals, your personal values and beliefs, and how you can kind of create that positive change within your community, um, even when sometimes this negative change is coming into light um, for the better. It's also um, important to realize that naturally um, our brain fears change. We're creatures of habit. Um, we don't like change. So people in leadership roles who understand that um, it's going to be tough for individuals, it's going to be tough for yourself um, to go through these processes of change are going to be the ones that are going to be staying optimistic and encouraging the growth within the organization. Um, so understanding the difficulty for not only yourself, but the people that you are leading um, and kind of guiding them through that process is going to um, help you stand out as a leader on campus. And then how you respond to change. Like I said before, um, being optimistic, um, not pessimistic, understanding that change happens for a reason. Um, it can be positive change, it can be negative change, but um, it is always showing you that your organization is moving forward. Um, so looking at change as um, an opportunity for you to grow, um, I think is always the best way. And then the last one that we're going to discuss is stay grounded. 
um, it is always easy for um, us just as individuals of a world where we live in, you know, Instagram with the rose, um, rose colored lenses. Um, we want the perfect life. We want the perfect leadership experience. And sometimes when things are going super well, um, we kind of get caught up into that and we kind of sometimes get an ego. So understanding that as a leader, being um, humble and keeping your humility um, is going to allow you to connect better with the people that you're leading. And so they're not seeing you as a manager who's only making um, decisions for themselves for personal gain. Um, but they understand that you are a leader of their organization and you have them in mind as well. Um, with that being said, it is okay if things are going awesome to celebrate that, um, to understand that not, not everything goes well all the time. So when things are going super well, it is okay to stop, take a breath, step back and say, guys, we're doing an amazing job. Um, and a lot of people need the leader that is going to be optimistic in that sense. Um, it's when your personal ego gets in the way is when, um, people start stepping back away from you. Um, and then understanding that you as an individual are not the only person running the organization. Um, it takes every single member of the group that you were leading to build, um, that organization that's going to create that social positive change that we were talking about. So respecting everybody, even if it's somebody who you don't think is doing as much, um, understanding everybody brings a piece of the puzzle to the table um, in uh, encouraging that and showing them that they do matter. Um, and so once people start feeling respected and wanted in an organization, they can start building themselves up and they can start, um, you know, having more roles. Sometimes people just need a little um, push and a little encouragement to kind of understand what kind of leader they are or what kind of follower they are. Um, and so understanding that everyone contributes um, and everybody should be respected. So that is what leadership looks like on campus in terms of um, CARES. Going back with contributes uniqueness, acting effectively, staying resilient, embracing that change, and then staying grounded. Um, and so I also wanted to let you guys know about other leadership opportunities that you can be a part of um, on campus. And so um, I think a lot of you are first year students, so understanding that you don't necessarily have to jump right into a leadership role. It's okay to take a couple of semesters um, to be a part of an organization and see how they function, see how they run, see if their um, goals and their values align with your own personal goals and values. And then once you see that, you can absolutely kind of look into being in a leadership position within that organization. Um, some leadership opportunities that I personally oversee that are kind of meant to help build your leadership skills um, are these four programs. Um, so the Leadership Institute is, um, I'd say, our premier leadership program on campus um, in a sense of it is an application process and we accept 10 to 15 students per semester. Um, and this really um, dives deep into what it looks like to be a leader. Um, we take the social change model and we um, each semester dive into um, a component of that. Um, and so, you know, your first tier is looking at your personal beliefs, what you truly value, um, and how you describe leadership within yourself. Um, so if that's something that you're looking for, um, kind of an intensive um, leadership workshop, um, scenario that would be an awesome opportunity that is starting back in the spring semester um, since it is very hands-on um, and personal um, we wanted to make sure that we were in person for that um, another thing that we offer every spring semester is the leadership summit which is our annual leadership conference this is open for all students on campus um, every year has a different theme and we bring um, 
not only faculty, staff, and students into this um, to do presentations on the different themes and the different topics, but we also bring um, individuals off campus um, into this. So if you're looking for kind of like a one day quick um, leadership conference type feel, um, the Leadership Summit, uh, Summit um, I think would be right up your alley. Camp Rex Leadership Retreat. This is for the more um, adventurous people. Um, it is uh, kind of our one day retreat where we go off campus and we do a lot of team building exercises um, and we do high ropes courses, um, hopefully zip lining. Um, we're looking at doing one in this spring semester since we weren't able to do it this fall. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And then um, the Walt Disney World Leadership Experience is a really great opportunity where we take students down to Walt Disney World and they actually facilitate a leadership program for us. Um, and so that is an opportunity for you to not only um, see what leadership looks like at Queens and how we view leadership, but also how a worldwide um, company views leadership and how they um, promote leadership within their organization. So these are kind of our um, building leadership opportunities. And then of course we have um, opportunities for you to actually be in leadership roles. Um, so, you know, just off the top of my head, we have our ICC, which is our clubs and organizations. So if you're interested in being in a club or organization, our, we have a list of those on our My Queens um, website under student activities. Um, those have connections where you can reach out to the presidents of those organizations. If you find something that you're interested in, reach out and say, hey, I'm a first year student. I'm looking at joining your organization. How can I do that? Um, if you are looking for an overview of kind of all of the organizations we have on campus um, right now, um, we usually have a clubs and orgs fair in the fall. This year it was virtual and that was posted yesterday, I believe. So if you want to go to Rex's Royal Connection in the My Courses, um, that should be posted so you can kind of look at um, what organizations we have to offer. We then, if you were looking at something that is more um, programming based, um, our campus union board is our largest programming board. Um, they are part of SGA and they are the ones that put on the events on campus. So Midnight on Ice, Trip Around the World, Homecoming, um, all of those big events that we have um, is done by CUB. So if that's something you're interested in, um, absolutely reach out to them. They have an Instagram as well um, that they will check messages on. Um, if that's something that you're interested in applying for. And then of course, we have SGA, um, Student Government Association, first year students um, are also allowed to join. Um, Keaton Hill is the current um, president of SGA. So if you have any questions about joining SGA or what that looks like for this semester, next semester, or um, in the future at Queens, um, you can reach out to him and he will be happy um, to let you know. Um, and then we have, of course, athletics. Um, we have a really great, robust athletic community on campus. And all of the um, individuals are leaders um, right on the field. And so understanding how you can be a leader on the field and then bring that leadership with those transferable skills into a club or an organization um, or another entity, um, I think is really awesome. And then some other leadership roles that we do have um, or leadership opportunities that you can get involved with is fraternity and sorority life. Um, and they are having um, open recruitment this semester. So if that is something you're interested in, you can reach out directly to them um, and they will absolutely give you more information about their organizations if that's something you're interested in. Um, of course, resident assistants who live um, on campus and work with residents life and housing to kind of create that community um, within our residence halls. Um, Queens ambassadors are those who do the campus tours and work with admissions to kind of promote the university. Um, and then of course, rural leaders um, are those who work with orientation and work with incoming students. So if that's something that you um, enjoyed experiencing this year virtually, um, reach out to Monica Gillette for next summer um, and you can be a rural leader um, working with those incoming students. 
Um, does anybody have any questions at this point? And you can unmute. Um, okay, it looks like I was during one of the meetings and tried to find a recording for it, but I can't find it. A recording for ICC meeting, I'm assuming, or clubs and organizations. Um, it, I believe, was posted on Wednesday under Rex's connection on my courses. Um, if you go there today and it's not listed, um, reach out to Monica Gillette and she should be able to help you with that. Um, where do we submit our reflection questions? That I am not sure. Um, I would look at your SLD program packets um, or information that they sent you, and it should. Um, tell you any other questions comments or concerns how do we find the contact information for the storms or like okay so you can go to um, my queens and once you sign in you should be able to look at the student activities if you click under departments um, go down to student activities and on the right hand side of that main page um, there should be um, a link that says clubs and organizations. Um, if you click on that, that should have a list of everybody with their contact information. Um, if you can't find that, you can also reach out to myself or Eddie Harris, who directly oversees clubs and organizations, and his contact information is on that student activities um, page as well. If we are a student athlete, could we still be an RA? Um, I believe so, yes. Um, you can reach out to Residence Life and Housing. I believe that there are um, RAs who are athletes. Um, so that's just another great opportunity for you to get involved on campus. So before you all go, um, I would love for you to take a super quick, it takes less than 30 minutes, I mean, 30 seconds. Gosh, it took 30 minutes. I feel so bad. Um, if you take your phone camera or Snapchat and just um, snap a pic or open it up for this QR code, it will take you directly to a survey. Um, and that survey is five questions long, and it will take you less than 30 seconds. But that will help us um, create workshops for you all in the future and kind of make sure that um, the information that we are providing is beneficial for you all. So if you wouldn't mind taking that survey, I would appreciate it. And I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I love Ring Central. All right. If anybody does have any other questions, you can reach out to me directly or, um, yeah, reach out to me directly. Thank you all for coming. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, and I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a Thank great you. day. Yeah. Thank you. Have a blessed day.